when I grow up, I'm going to be a star. I'm going to star at the Palladium. And they'd say, but you can't dance, sing, play a musical instrument. You have no talent whatsoever. He did become a star, and he did do it at the Palladium. And he still can't dance, <laughs> sing, <laughs> play a piano. What is the secret of the boy? Larry Grayson. It's always a pleasure to see you. Good and to see you, Terry. It's a, it's a joy for me because I'm not stuck up in a box up there somewhere with five other people. We know we never get to talk like this, do we? When I do oh, blankety I'm... blank with you, I'm up there with Beryl Reed or somebody, and tonight I can talk to you. What yeah. a joy it is. Normally I have to share you with others. Yes. And of course I don't like doing that. No, I did the truth. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 you're looking ever so well. You look, you look, Thank you. I, I've I been watching the compliment. Pardon? Is it the talky air? That's I doing... think it must be, yes. I've moved to glorious Devon. And I love it. It's, it's uh, I call it the Arthur Marshall country. Mm. <laughs> but uh, Torquay, where you live now, it's rather hilly. Yes. How do you, how do you and Arthur negotiate the hills? Well, you see, I have a tandem. Oh. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> why do you always bring such a common audience? <laughs> and, and, uh, Not with me. Are they with you? No. Oh. Well, anyway, I, I've got this uh, friend, and it was got on this tandem. He said, so I manage the hills like that. Well, what about Arthur? Arthur? The dog. My, my little dog? Yeah. I have a basket at the front, like, uh, you know, in The Wizard of Oz, <laughs> Miss Gulch. And he sits in the front, you know, and we, we ride about. You, I mean, nobody knows me because I wear a fur hat. They think I'm Coral Brown. <laughs> <laughs> you love all those, those Coral Browns and... Oh, yes, I love... Did you see that marvellous, marvellous thing she did? What was it called? An Englishman Abroad. It was a marvellous uh, thing on television. BBC did it so well with Alan Bates. And I wear a fur hat the same, and I went out the next morning shopping in Wellswood. That's where I go shopping. All the best people go to Wellswood. And a, an old lady, she had very bad eyesight, and she said, Oh, look, there's Coral Brown. <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, <clears throat> in your early days... Well, luckily, you weren't taken for Vincent Price. Yeah. Well, you were. <laughs> in your early days, you used to impersonate film stars, didn't you? Oh, um, yes. That was uh, when I was at school. Um, I used to impersonate Catherine Hepburn and people like that, Betty Davis. I did it all the time. And um, I used to get the cane more often than not for doing this. Did you I, I wasn't do interested in, in, in anything at school, but uh, <clears throat> all I wanted to do was half past four to come around so I could get out and, and get off to the, to the pictures, which I loved. Do you still do the, no. the female stars? Uh, oh, yes, of course. But, but you see, I, uh, I love the, uh, the other channel. Don't mention it, but the other channel that shows all the old movies. Well, BBC Two. Uh, no, the other one. And I know. <laughs> <laughs> because I have all the old films on, you know, Smiling Through and <clears throat> The House of Rothschild, George Arliss and things like that, which I love. Don't keep laughing at me, Terry. Oh, no, no. I'm serious. <laughs> it's those wonderful names, George Arliss. Mr. George Arliss, if you don't mind. He was always billed as Mr. George Arliss. And, uh, and all those marvellous films. I, re I remember them all very well. Do you know, Terry, I could go into a cinema when I was a kid and you know, they open the door and tell you ticket. And I could look at the screen and tell you who made the picture. Whether it was Warner Brothers, Metro Goldwyn Mayer, 20th Century Fox, Paramount, Monogram, GB, Government British, I could tell you. How? But, but, but just the look, just the film. It's funny. And I could tell also with the music. I could tell Max Steiner's music from Warner Brothers Pictures and uh, Metro Goldwyn Mayer. I could tell right away. Was it the female stars that particularly appealed? Oh, yes, of course to? it was, yes. I mean, look at the Joan Crawford <laughs> coat I'm wearing now. <laughs> <laughs> She always had shoulders like this, Joe Crawford. Don't stare. <laughs> so when you were in America last, you were, you were confused with Myrna Loy. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a lovely story because Jack Klugman, who's a great mate of mine, you know, Quincy, you know all those lovely things he does. And uh, I, he was coming to take me out to his place at Malibu. So I was in the hotel and uh, this, uh, the, the door, not my door, and I went to the door and this, this bellboy stood there, you see this basket of fruit, and the ribbons and everything, and I said, do come in. <laughs> come in. I was in one of my moods. Oh, of course. Well, he came in, <laughs> and I put it down there, and I said, don't go, wait a minute. I was acting, you know. So I took the... That sounds very like you. Did you, know? <laughs> you know me so well. And I got the card, you see, and I said to this, this boy, isn't this wonderful? All this, and my picture hasn't been released yet. <laughs> and he went... <laughs> and I looked at him, I said, you don't know me, do you? 
He said, no, sir. I said, my name is, my name is Myrna Loy. <laughs> and he just looked. I said, you may go now. Of course, when I, when I told Jack Klugman about this, he was in fits, and I have a picture in my home, and it's, it says on it, to Larry, all my love, always. To me, you'll always be Myrna Loy. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> That's the nicest thing he could have said to well, you. Well, of course he could. Mm. Of course. I went with him to, to tape the Val Fidel Sassoon show at, uh, over there, and... Uh, he's coming over very soon. I'm going to his birthday party. Have you been invited? No, I'm asked nowhere. Pardon? <laughs> Have you been invited to no. Fidel's party? Fid. Well, the BBC are doing it. It's been televised. Are, are you going? No. Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're everywhere else, aren't you? <laughs> Would you like to have been a Hollywood star? Um... I mean, apart, it, from, it, it, apart it, from being Myrna Loy, would you like to have been a Hollywood film star? Uh, oh, in the old days, Teddy, yes, of course I would. Not, not, I don't know. I suppose the films are very good today, but because they're not like they used to be. But they are to other people growing up and everything, you know. But to me, I love the old movies. You see, I can't bear all this getting into bed with everybody. And, uh, but you don't have to get into bed with everybody. Nobody no, frightens my dog. I mean, when I, <laughs> you see, when you're on the television, I mean, it starts, you see, and they're always in bed together, you know, and it's awful. Um, uh, and I don't... I'm, I'm, I'm a bit... Um, I'm very broad-minded. You're not. Yes, I am. But, but I, I, I don't like things like that. Well, I Perhaps it's because I'm getting older. Oh, nonsense. I mean, the doctor... No, no, no. listen, listen. The doctor said to well, me... Well, perhaps you're right. No, listen, the, doc the doctor... <laughs> The doctor said to me, he said, Larry, he said, Laz, he calls me Laz. He said, Laz, he said, when you're, listen, he said, when you're 39, you'll find that you'll change. <laughs> and I have. And, uh, and that's interesting. And of course, you see, I get, you see, now I notice, I mean, I hate to mention my age to anyone. It's a secret, you see, like Mary Astor. And um, I find that I get this throbbing in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and my ankle swells, you know, and I get, and I get you see, but I, I won't give in, I, you know, I, uh, because I don't feel my age, you know, I know you do, because uh, <laughs> I hear you in the morning on the radio and sometimes I feel for you. <laughs> well, I'm not there. <laughs> you are there, <laughs> Look, well, what has this got to do? with your dog throwing up whenever there is sex on the television. <laughs> I don't know. I can't think what men would say that. You see, I wander a little bit now. Have you noticed? I do, I do wander a little bit. You're very young to be wandering because you're just 39, aren't you? I mean... That's the nicest thing you've said to me, Terry. That's why I always come on your shows, you see, because you say the nicest things. You have such a lovely smile as well, I was told to say. <laughs> so, I'm sorry you're leaving blankety blank and all that. I'm ever so sorry about it, you know. Well, I... I think I've probably peaked now, Larry. It's, you are? it's downhill now. Oh, no, not you. Oh, yes. Oh, no, you're... Oh, yes. No, you'll go until you're 90, I think, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you that a lovely story about the other week? Uh, one of my landladies said the other week, she said about going to the mood and all carries on, and she said, she said, I can't understand it. She said, she said, we're living now, she said, in the 20th Century Fox. She said... <laughs> she didn't know. She thinks it's the 20th century fox we're living in. When you went to Hollywood, was yes. it a disappointment for you or was it as you expected it to be, all glamour and excitement? Well, of course, all the great ones have gone, but, no, I loved it. I, I went to the Chinese stage, put my hands in those things, you know, where Nelson Eddy and Eleanor Powell... He had small hands, Judy Nelson Garland. Eddy. Who? Nelson Eddy. How do you know? <laughs> well, well, he... He was known for his small hands. Who told you that? <laughs> Jeanette MacDonald. He was very big man. He had very big hands, did Nelson Eddy. Had he? Yes. It was Jeanette MacDonald who had the small hands. <laughs> Who told you? <laughs> I don't know where you got your information from. I, I'm, I'm riddled in, in uh, Hollywood. What's he doing there? I mean, I'm riddled in Hollywood and all that. And it, Nelson Eddy never had small hands. I'm surprised that you say anything like that. I don't think he had small <laughs> So that's what you did in Hollywood? Just put your hands in the oh, cement? Oh, no, 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 no. I went everywhere. I loved it all. I, it, it, was, uh, it was super. I mean, to be there, uh, to me, of course it's all gone, but to, to be there uh, and uh, walk down the street. I suppose a man of your age, you see, that's what it would be. You remember, you remember all the, the old silent movies, the black and white movies and that, that, that yes. we don't, do we? <laughs> I don't <laughs> <laughs> 
I remember... <laughs> I saw Trader Hall, the, the uh, original, uh, and uh, Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, you see, I loved, I loved the movies, I loved the films, right when I was a, when a child. And because the wonderful thing was, when I used to go to the cinema years ago and, and see people like Anna Neagle in Nell Gwynn and Peg of Old Drury, and Evelyn Lay with Raymond Navarro in The Night is Young, things like that. Well, you see, I used to sit there and look at the, the screen, Oh, I'm marvellous. I'm still stage struck, I'm film struck, just to say. But is that not just in retrospect as you look back on it? There must have been times during the hard graft when you thought, why am I doing this? No. I'm not getting no, anywhere. No, I didn't, honestly. No, I didn't. I, I, I never envied the stars at the top because if the stars weren't up there, I wouldn't have been working. I was only that big on the bill. But I never, I never, I, you know, I never bothered about it, really. I, I used to think I'd be a star one day, but as I got older, I thought, well, it's too late for me now. I won't be now. Why did it take you so long, do you think? I don't know. I, I, I was... I mean, you must have shown the talent. People must have seen that you had this talent. People must have said, you're going to be a star. Well, well, only one person did, actually. It was at Chiswick Empire, and I was on the bill with Dorothy Squires, and she watched me one night. And when I finished my act, as I walked off, she said to me, you're a very funny man. Why aren't you a star? I said, well, I keep telling them, Miss Squires, but nobody listens. And she <laughs> laughed. And when I did my first television show for uh, Saturday Variety, she was topping the bill. And as I walked, she cried, and she put her arms around me. She said, I told you years ago you, you'd make it. I'm writing a book at the moment, you know, my life story. I'm doing it right now. Are you going to cut out all the unsavoury bits? No, you're in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a toucher as well, you know. <laughs> I asked uh, Matthew Kelly this in a previous program. Who's that? A, 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 <laughs> one of the newer films. Oh, I see. Yeah. You wouldn't know him. No, I don't. And um, I was like, he, he tends to be a bit like that sometimes. Oh, does he? Mm. What a shame. He'll grow out of it. <laughs> Let's hope so. Yeah. But, but I was asking him, and I wonder, can you answer, why do you think a British audience reacts so well to what, what's known as camp? Yes. To that kind of, the limp race. Well, of course, so the audience is a camp that come and see us. You see, um, <laughs> It, 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 it's, it's very funny, like, there's two, uh, that lovely story about two ladies sitting on a bench in a park and one lady said, uh, they say he's a camp comic. She said, well, yes, she said, I've seen him at Butlins twice. <laughs> you, know, it's, it's, uh, you, 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 can't, you can't define it. You see, years and years ago, there were those marvellous reviews in London with Hermione Gingold and Baddeley and Henry Kendall, Douglas Bing, wonderful Douglas Bing. And it was all that, um, it was all West End, you see, all very camp and everything. And I took it out to the to the masses. Yes. You know, they used to laugh at me and they say, oh, you must go and see Larry Grace at the theatre because, well, they used to say that. You say, go and see that chap at the theatre with a chair. He said, shut that door. And he talks about aches and pains and his legs swelling But how would, you've played some very tough spots. Very. In that kind of, how, how does a, a sort of working, tough, say, a stevedore audience, well, a docker's well, audience, well, how does it react to that? to me, Terry. You know, they say like, all right, Larry, great, my mother loves you. All right, they, they laugh, you see, like, they go, oh, laddie, what a gay day, and all that. And it's done like, uh, it's done for fun. I, I don't offend anybody. I don't, I, I hope not, because, because, because I'm me, I say the things I feel, and, and uh, because I'm a very loving person, as you know. I mean, the, um, <laughs> <laughs> because you see, the, <laughs> <laughs> it takes your breath away sometimes, but I mean, I mean, <laughs> Oh, yes, I mean, uh, it's, um, it's me, it, it's, uh, it, it's in here. You have to have warmth and be sincere in what you're doing, you see. And I believe when I, get, when I say I've got to lie down, I, I've got all limp. I do you, you go do limp. You feel like lying down. <laughs> what? No, I said you feel like lying down. But I do, yes, sometimes I do. I, as I say, I, do, I go like that. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, being 39. <laughs> what you want to bother something? What? <laughs> <laughs> Why what? What is what is life to hold for you now? Well, I, I mean, I love I love the people, I love audiences. I, that's why I love uh, love doing the generation game because I met people all the time, like you do. I mean, you love people. I don't. What, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's true then. Anyway, I mean, <laughs> all this. Um, oh, I, I like meeting people. I, lo I love uh, traveling. I love seeing people. I've always done it. I think through you're my... like you're like Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> yes. I didn't know you'd remember her. <laughs> <laughs> Anne of 
Green Gables? Yes, yeah. and Shirley played the part. She was wonderful. <laughs> Faye Bainter in White Banners. <laughs> <laughs> you see, if I didn't know you better, I'd say that that was all artificial, but it isn't, because that is the kind of person you are. Yeah, well, I'm delighted you could come and join me. Thank, Thank you, Jack. <laughs>